Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast for the Northeast. I'm Andrew Pritchard, Senior Meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. So you check out temperatures here at 8.30 on this Friday morning. We've got a boundary that's kind of draped right across this region. We're very warm and muggy south of that. Upper 70s, lower 80s with dew points to match that. We've got some cooler air trying to work its way down from the Northeast, from the Great Lakes, and into parts of the Eastern Corn Belt. And it's along that boundary, again, draped right across this region that we've seen showers and thunderstorms over the last 72 hours. Much of the precipitation focused here from the southern plains into parts of the mid-Atlantic right along that boundary. And as we take a look at satellite and lightning activity here early on Friday morning, again, much of that activity focused here from the Red River into parts of the Ohio River Valley as we look at the radar picture again matching that. Much of the heavier precipitation this morning across parts of Missouri, Kansas, and Oklahoma, and then eastward on into parts of the Mid-Atlantic and then portions of the Northeast region here, eastern Pennsylvania into New Jersey, over toward the Long Island area there, picking up some heavy rain this morning. Now as we take a look at the high-resolution NAM model, uh, as we head into the first part of the weekend, we'll watch that precipitation continue across southern portions of the northeast region here as we head into the middle part of the day with more isolated, very widely isolated shower activity possible uh, across parts of uh, Pennsylvania and upstate New York as we head to the late afternoon and evening hours. Overnight will be dry across the northeast region and into Saturday morning. It's as we get into the late part of the day on Saturday that we could see some thunderstorm activity flaring up across central and eastern portions of Pennsylvania back toward the Ohio River Valley. And there is a chance that a couple of those storms could be strong with some gusty winds or some damaging uh, a large hail over an inch in diameter. Those thunderstorms could continue across portions of Pennsylvania and New York during the overnight hours as this area of low pressure begins to lift in from the Midwest. As we get to Saturday morning, this is sunrise on Saturday morning, we've got a warm front kind of draped across this region, uh, the cold front lingering back across the West. And so as we head into the afternoon on Sunday, We'll again watch this region here for some thunderstorm activity to begin flaring up across parts of the northeast region. And then, of course, we will be talking about Isaias. I'm sure that I butchered that as we head deeper into the weekend. We'll look at total precipitation accumulation between now and Sunday afternoon. Again, our tropical system still well off to the south, but here you can see kind of the, the scattered thunderstorm activity uh, fanning out heading into the northeast region. So some people may pick up as much as if it is an inch here if you pick up one of those thunderstorms. Uh, and then other people may be left dry here as we head through the next two and a half days. As we look at the hazards map here from the National Weather Service, much of our heat-related uh, advisories uh, found off here across portions of the west. We've got our tropical advisories down here in the southeast. From the Ozarks into the mid-Atlantic, we've got flood advisories, and then we are quiet across the northeast region here as far as our county alerts go from the National Weather Service. Not talking about much in the way of severe weather here as we look at the next three days from the SPC. Here is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And again on Sunday, that was where I kind of drew the warm front, the cold front, and our upper level low making their way through the northeast region. And that's why we could see that chance for a couple of strong storms on Sat or Sunday afternoon and evening across the northeast here. Again, some damaging winds, maybe some storms producing hail up to an inch in diameter. Now, as we look at the upper level pattern averaged out over the next five days, 500 millibar height anomalies, we're going to be driven by a pattern that has a ridge in the west. Again, that's why much of the heat has been forced off to the west right now beneath that ridge. A deep trough digging in here across the midsection of the country. That's going to allow the central U.S. parts of the Corn Belt to cool down here uh, for the first time uh, since, you know, early to mid-June was the last time it was 70 degrees here in central Illinois. Uh, and that is a stretch of five straight weeks there. Not only that, but this is what is going to help deflect uh, Isaias, Is Isaias, oh, goodness, uh, off to the east eventually as we get towards the coast. So the forecast path here expected to go up towards the Florida coast as we head into the weekend and then begin lifting along with this trough uh, off to the north and to the east as we head into the early part of next week. So here is the forecast track from uh, from the National Hurricane Center. Again, uh, maintaining hurricane strength along the east coast of Florida as we head through Saturday and Sunday, uh, kind of east of the Georgia coast by, we, by the time we get to Monday morning, and then making its way into the northeast as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday. And as we flip it over, we look at the earliest reasonable time of tropical storm force winds. Looks like that would move into portions of, you know, uh, New Jersey uh, coastal areas here Monday night into early Tuesday morning as we talk about getting a little bit further north from there, Long Island, uh, Massachusetts, coastal areas there, uh, even New Hampshire and Maine uh, as we get into Tuesday morning. 
So we'll look at the European model 500 millibar height and vorticity again. Here is the general flow of the atmosphere. Here is our hurricane down off to the bottom right. And as I just kind of hit play on this heading into the weekend, into early next week, let's go ahead and pause it, bring it back here to Sunday, uh, Saturday into Sunday. Here you see our, our little wave moving from the Ohio River Valley into uh, the, the northeast here as we get into Sunday. And so this is what brings that low chance for some strong storms to the northeast as we get into Sunday afternoon and evening. And then again, you see this trough just digging here and the flow kind of lifting off to the northeast. That's what's going to take our, our hurricane here and deflect it off to the northeast here as we get into the early part of next week. So we'll have to talk about the, the track. I'm sure it will be evolving as we head through the weekend. Uh, so when Eric posts his video on Monday morning, he'll have an update on the track here exactly of uh, Hurricane Isaias as it makes its way into uh, coastal portions of the northeast region. Again, it's going to be the timing uh, and the, the collision here of that trough and our hurricane that's going to dictate you know, how far inland or how far out to sea this thing is kept. So again, uh, just you know, pay attention to the national hurricanes forecast if you live in this corridor here and you're concerned. Again, this is going to be a coastal problem, not an inland problem. So if you're coastal areas in the northeast here, uh, pay attention to the forecast over the weekend and then check back if you want to with us on Monday morning. Eric will have an update on that in the uh, the, the most late or the latest uh, specifics. But we'll take a look at the two Euro European forecast here, the precipitation forecast, bringing it back to Friday. Again, watching thunderstorms across southern areas of the northeast, Pennsylvania, New Jersey primarily this morning with that activity ending as we head into the later part of the day today. Quiet overnight into Saturday. It's late Saturday into Sunday that eastern portions of the northeast, or I apologize, western portions of the northeast, western Pennsylvania, central and uh, western Pennsylvania into western New York, seeing some showers and storms late Saturday into Sunday or Saturday night. And then on Sunday, uh, we'll keep that chance for some strong storms in the forecast here across the northeast, damaging winds, large hail being the main threat. So then on the back half of the weekend, after we get Sunday's storms out of there, we will turn our attention to the tropics, watching for our hurricane coming up the east coast. And again, we'll have more information on the exact track through the northeast as we get to the other side of the weekend here. The impact with that trough going to be everything in driving Isaias either off to the, uh, the Atlantic side here or uh, potentially inland. So again, we'll have a lot to be decided here over the next couple of days. Total precipitation over the next five days in the top left. We're in the left. That's There's no top or bottom, I guess, in the days 6 through 10 over here on the right. And again, much of this precipitation over the next five days from our late Saturday, Sunday storm system. And then as we get into early next week, looking fairly dry if you're off toward the west, but as you're off towards the east, much more precipitation possible as our hurricane makes its way through the region. So again, much of that going to be decided over the weekend. That will have a big impact. Then we'll be watching portions of central Pennsylvania back into the eastern Corn Belt closely for precipitation over the next 48 to 72 hours with our late Saturday into Sunday storms as we try to eradicate some of the in increasing drought across the region. High temperatures over the next few days, upper 70s, low 80s today, mid 80s off towards the north tomorrow, and again, 70s and 80s as we head into Sunday, transitioning to a bit of a cooler pattern Monday and Tuesday with 70s and 80s across the region.